Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. Nine days ago, I came to your homes and requested you to make great sacrifices to save lives and to protect our motherland. I announced the imposition of strict restrictions to movement and asked the residents of the greater Accra metropolitan area and Kasoa and the greater Kumasi metropolitan area and its contiguous districts to stay at home for two weeks in order to give us the opportunity to stave off this pandemic. As a result, residents of these two areas had to make significant adjustments to our way of life with the ultimate goal being to protect permanently our continued existence on this land. They heeded the call and they have proven so far to each other and indeed to the entire world that being a Ghanaian means we look out for each other. Yes, there are a few who continue to find ways to be recalcitrant, but the greater majority have complied and have done so with calm and dignity. Tonight, I say thank you to each and every one of you, law-abiding citizens. Let me thank in particular all our frontline actors who continue to put their lives on the line to help ensure that we defeat the virus. To our health workers, I say a big aiko for the continued sacrifices you are making in caring for those infected with the virus and in caring for the sick in general. You are the heroes and heroines of our generation, and government will do all in its power to provide you with the relevant tools to do your work effectively. To the men and women of our security services who have been enforcing the directives by patrolling our streets day and night, conducting surveillance, snap checks, and mounting roadblocks, we're deeply in your debt. It is these security measures that have created the basic framework within which our medical personnel are able to pursue contact tracing, testing, and treatment of persons with the virus whose implementation offers us the most secure means to defeat the virus. Reports I've received so far indicate that the police, military, and other members of our security services have discharged their mandate with considerable professionalism. Furthermore, working with the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, we see personnel of the Ghana Armed Forces involved in the cleanup of our drainage systems and of our markets. In the very few instances where members of our security agencies have employed the use of excessive force against the citizenry in enforcing the restrictions on movement. The Inspector General of Police and the Chief of Defense Staff of the Armed Forces have taken steps to investigate such incidents, and they have given me the assurance that those found culpable will be duly sanctioned. Thus far, the alleged wrongdoers have been withdrawn from the ongoing exercise. To enhance command and control, more senior officers have been deployed at the operational level, and each member of our security services participating in the exercise has been handed an aid memoir highlighting essentially the guidelines for the operation. However, I'm extremely perturbed by the actions of a few unpatriotic persons who were deliberately passing off and circulating old videos of alleged brutality by members of the security agencies, largely of foreign origin, and presenting them as though there were new incidents by Ghanaian security personnel which have occurred during the course of this past week. It is sad, it is unfortunate, and it must end. We should all be in this fight together, and there's nothing 
to be gained with widespread fabrication and distribution of such videos, whose sole aim is to create discontent and undermine the trust of the population in the men and women of our security services. Who gains from such conduct? Nobody in their right senses. The law enforcement agencies are determined to locate the originators of these antisocial acts. Fellow Ghanaians, as I've said before, all that government is doing is intended to achieve five key objectives. Limit and stop the importation of the virus, contain its spread, provide adequate care for the sick, limit the impact of the virus on social and economic life, and inspire the expansion of our domestic capability and deepen our self-reliance. As of today, Sunday, 5th April, our current situation is such that we have recorded a total of 214 cases. The Great Accra region has 189 cases, followed by the Ashanti region with 12, Northern region 10, Upper West region 1, Eastern Region 1, and Upper East Region 1. The 10 from the Northern Region are the West African nationals who entered our country illegally after the closure of the borders. In total, three persons have fully recovered from the disease, 49 persons have been discharged from health from treatment facilities, and are being managed from home and the remaining 155 are responding to treatment. Two persons are moderately ill, and five persons, as I said before, have lost their lives. Of the 1,030 travelers who were mandatorily quarantined and tested on their arrival in Ghana on the 21st and 22nd of March, 79 were initially found to be positive and appropriate arrangements were made for their isolation and treatment. Subsequently, after 12 further days of quarantine, 26 other persons were found to be positive as a result of their second test, bringing the total number of those found to be positive to 105, all of whom have been isolated for treatment. Of the remaining 925, persons who have undergone two tests and found to be negative, 804 have been released from quarantine to join their families. The remaining 121 are, as I speak, in the process of being released. I want to thank all of them and their families and loved ones for their understanding and cooperation with the stringent procedures the government was forced to deploy in the public interest. Efforts also at contact tracing have been ramped up over the course of the past week. Indeed, for every confirmed case of COVID-19, all the contacts have been listed, monitored, and tracked. Additionally, in the home or place of work of a confirmed case, all persons, be they at home or at work, have been tested, whether they had symptoms or not. Within the locality or neighborhood of a confirmed case, the opportunity is also being provided for persons to undergo voluntary testing to ascertain the extent of community spread. We are thus about to enter a critical phase of our fight in the coming week, as the Ghana Health Service is due to receive the results of some 15,384 out of 19,276 persons who have been reached through contact tracing. It is the results of these tests that will determine our future course of action. Government's policy and measures will continue to be driven by the science in this matter. The Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences and the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, are now partnering government in the struggle. I met with their representatives on Friday 
and arrange with them a mechanism for the realization of this partnership. The nation and I appreciate their involvement. So in the course of the coming week, a determination will be made as to whether or not to extend the duration of the two-week restriction on movement and the implementation or otherwise of any more enhanced measures to deal with the virus. I have, however, by executive instrument, extended the closure of our borders for two more weeks until further notice. The data tells us that the overwhelming majority of confirmed cases came from travelers or from people who have come into contact with travelers. Fellow Ghanaians, tonight I stand before you to ask for your continued patience, support, vigilance, and adherence to the measures. Let each one of us play his or her part to enhance our collective efforts at containing the spread of the virus, which will enable us to hasten the lifting of these restrictions and returning the nation to normalcy. I was encouraged by the appreciation of government's handling of the pan pandemic and the offer of support by the leadership of the major political parties in the country when I met with them on Friday. I applaud Parliament's decision to call off his planned recess and be on standby to aid in the fight against the virus. I thank staff of the University of Ghana's Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology's Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, and the National Public Health Reference Laboratory of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital for the solid work they're doing for Mother Ghana. I'm very grateful to the individuals and institutions who have responded to my appeal for donations to be made into the COVID-19 National Trust Fund, which has been established to complement government's fight against the virus and to assist in the welfare of the needy and the vulnerable. A total amount of some 8 million 750,000 CD, which includes 600,000 United States dollars, have been received so far for this purpose. I'm happy that so many appointees of my government have also followed my example by donating their salaries to the fund. We are in difficult times, and that is why I directed the Minister for Finance to send to Parliament the Coronavirus Alleviation Program, whose objective is to protect households and livelihoods, support micro, small, and medium-sized businesses, minimize job losses, and source additional funding for promotion of industries to shore up and expand industrial output for domestic consumption and exports. Through this program, the Ministries of Gender, Children and Social Protection and Local Government and Rural Development and the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, working with MMDCEs and the faith-based organizations, have begun to provide food for up to 400,000 individuals and homes in the affected areas of the restrictions. This began in Accra today and will begin in Kumasi tomorrow. It will come in the form of dry food packages and hot meals and will be delivered to vulnerable communities in Accra, Tema, Kumasi, and Kasua. Again, the Ghana Water Company Limited and the Electricity Company of Ghana have been directed to ensure the stable supply of water and electricity during this period. In addition, there will be no disconnection of supply. Furthermore, government will absorb the water bills for all Ghanaians for the next three months, i.e. April, May, and June. All water tankers, publicly and privately owned, are also going to be mobilized to ensure the supply of water to all vulnerable communities. Government, 
in collaboration with the National Board for Small Scale Industries, business and trade associations, and selected commercial and rural banks, will roll out a soft loan scheme up to a total of 600 million CDs, which will have a one-year moratorium and two-year repayment period for micro, small, and medium-scale businesses. Fellow Ghanaians, it is vital that we protect the lives of our frontline health workers who are risking their lives every day to battle this virus. That is why government is placing a high priority on the procurement of personal protective equipment for them. Thus far, 350,000 masks, 558,650 examination gloves, 1,000 reusable goggles, 20,000 coveralls, 7,000 N95 respirators, 500 waterproof gumboots, 2,000 reusable face shields, 2,000 gallons of hand sanitizers, 10,100 milliliter pieces of hand sanitizers, and 500 shoe covers have been sent to the regional health directorates for onward distribution to the, health, the district health directorates for use by our health workers in all the districts. That the Minister for Health is ensuring that they reach the health workers. This notwithstanding, government is aware that more needs to be done, especially in the face of the global shortage of PPEs. It is for this reason the government is actively engaged with local manufacturing companies to assist them in the domestic production of PPEs. And I'm encouraged by the response from the Ghanaian private sector. Domestic production of face masks, head covers, surgical scrubs, and gowns will commence from Tuesday. For example, 3,600,000 face masks will be produced domestically with an output of 150,000 per day. I'm equally impressed with the invention of a solar-powered hand-washing sink by Judose from Kumasi and the COVID-19 prevention electronic bucket made by Kelvin Ousudapa and Richard Watting, both students of Obwase Senior High and Technical School. Necessity indeed is the mother of invention, as the Ghanaian sense of enterprise and innovation is beginning to be felt. An insurance package with an insurance sum of 350,000 CDs for each health personnel, an allied professional at the front, forefront of the fight, has been put in place with a daily allowance of 150 CDs being paid to contact tracers. Government has also decided that all health workers will not pay taxes on their emoluments for the next three months, i.e. April, May, and June. Furthermore, all frontline health workers will receive an additional allowance of 50% of their basic salary per month, i.e. for March, April, May, and June. The March allowance will be paid alongside that of April. The Minister of Transport is also making available for free Ayalolo buses to convey health workers in Accra, Tema, Kumasi, and Kaswa to and from work along specific routes for the entire duration of the restrictions. I'm happy that operators of public transport, such as trotros and taxis, are largely adhering to the admonition to observe social distancing in their vehicles. Each one of them should do so. Towards ensuring the cleanliness of our country, especially in the greater Accra and the greater Kumasi areas, which are currently the subjects of the restrictions, the Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources, together with some 400 personnel, drawn from the police, military, 
fire service and prison service from Friday 3rd April to today, Sunday 5th April, have embarked on desilting our gutters, collection and disposal of garbage from homes, public places, markets, and vehicle terminals. We must ensure that the end of this exercise will lead to a new attitude towards cleanliness in our surroundings. That would be a positive legacy from this crisis. MMDAs outside the areas affected by the restrictions have been directed to emulate this cleanup exercise. As of Saturday, 4th April 2020, markets and lorry terminals in 13 regions have been cleaned and sprayed, with the three other regions set to follow in the coming few days. We've had to take the extra step of closing a few markets in Accra and Kumasi, where traders and market women had flouted the rules for social distancing. Some districts have also embraced the policy of alternate days for alternative products in a bid to decongest the markets and ensure social distancing. I'm fully aware of the disruptions to your lives occasioned by these measures your personal movements, way of life, the education of your children, your livelihoods, have all been disturbed by this virus. But believe me, the measures are necessary if we are to free ourselves permanently of this pestilence. Fellow Ghanaians, I will continue passionately to appeal to you to observe prescribed social distancing and good personal hygiene to contain community spread. These enhanced hygiene protocols must become a part of our everyday lives. We must not abandon them. And remember that the law enforcement agencies are going to increase their enforcement of the stay-at-home directive. Do not leave your homes other than for the essential stipulated reasons. The sickness question our capacity for the maintenance of discipline in this period and in its aftermath. However, I am confident that we will prove them wrong. Ghanaians always rise up to the occasion, and we will do so again. United, we're going to win this battle. I'm privileged to be speaking to you on the sacred day of the Christian calendar, Palm Sunday, which will ushers in the Holy Week to commemorate the passion and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Let his example unite all of us, Christians, Muslims, all Ghanaians, in our care for each other and in our resolve to overcome this challenge. This too shall pass. Together, let us ensure that the scourge of this virus becomes nothing but a temporary blip on the fortunes of our nation. And we will go on to realize the vision and aspirations of our forebears who envisaged Ghana to be a free, democratic, prosperous nation, the beacon of freedom and justice, the black star of Africa, the harbinger, of a new black civilization in which the dignity and prosperity of black people everywhere are assured. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you.